Multiple groups are involved in highway landings and believe it or not, they are far more than you might realize. The pilots of the US Air Force are among the best trained in the world. The adaptability incorporated into the training progress is partly responsible for this. For instance, A-10 Thunderbolts are frequently assigned to missions in remote areas. These landing strips may be small, uneven, or even non-existent in some situations. A-10 will frequently be dispatched to land on highways in order to make sure the pilots are comfortable enough for various landings landing conditions. In these drills, the aircrew are exposed to obstacles like power wires and trees as well as other difficulties they would face when carrying out a genuine austere landing in the field. Ever curious how they did it? You just landed on the right video. Hey there! Welcome to another episode of High Technology. Before we ride along and see how massive A-10 practice landings on highways, feel free to join the club as we unravel high-end technologies on the planet by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any exciting videos in the future. Now, let's see the insane landing process of A-10 right in the middle of a highway. The A-10 Thunderbolt is the first United States Air Force aircraft created expressly for close air support of ground forces and is renowned for its exceptional mobility at all speeds. The Air Force claims that the aircraft can maintain extremely accurate weapon delivery and can stay close to the battle area for extended periods of time. Four A-10 Thunderbolt II aircraft from the 354th Fighter Squadron and the 127th Wing of Michigan Air National Guard made a landing on a state highway as part of Northern Strike 21. The Air Force has never before in American history intentionally landed a modern aircraft on a public road. The 355th Wing's involvement in this exercise shows the organization's ongoing efforts to develop its dynamic wing concept and nimble combat employment skills, which help its airmen operate from remote places with minimal infrastructure and manpower. The Air Force can rapidly project combat air power closer because of the a versatility in landing on several types of terrain, including highways and unimproved landing fields. This proof of concept demonstrates the potential of landing on any highway. The A-10 can land in a lot more locations, allowing it to operate anywhere at any time and to obtain fuel, weapons, and other ordnance. This will aid in avoiding the use of established bases that enemies can target by moving much more quickly. As part of this exercise, two C-146A Wolfhounds from the Air Force Special Operations Command also performed highway landings showcasing the capability of the service to integrate and use a variety of missions in difficult terrain. These landings support the accelerate change or lose strategic approach of Air Force Chief of Staff General C.Q. Brown Jr. by putting to the test and proving cutting-edge tactics that are not generally trained to, positioning the force to surpass any prospective opponent. This is a modest start toward inspiring more people to work from remote areas. In addition, the initial A-10 aircraft was delivered to the Davis-Montham Air Force Base in Arizona in 1975. The A-10 is a twin-engine jet aircraft that is also referred to as the Warthog and is mostly utilized against ground targets and light attack aircraft. The A-10 Thunderbolt, which is also built to be able to take off quickly, weighs around roughly 51,000 pounds when it takes off. The A-10 Thunderbolt can withstand direct strikes from small armor piercing and high explosive bullets of up to 23 millimeters because of redundant primary structural components in titanium armor that are meant to protect the pilots. The 70 5th Expeditionary Fighter Squadron at Moody Air Force Base in Georgia is where the Thunderbolts really fly and fight. The Thunderbolt was a crucial component of both Operation Desert Storm and Operation Noble because it combined heavy ordnance loads with loiter and a vast combat radius to assist in a variety of operations. The A-10 Thunderbolt had a mission-capable rate of over 96% during the Gulf War. The aircraft can carry up to 16,000 pounds of ordnance on 8 underwing and 3 under fuselage pylon stations, as well as a 7-barrel Gatling gun and other armaments. The US Air Force is attempting to put multi-capable airman concepts into action so that pilots and the aircraft can make decisions more quickly and accurately when landing at a remote location. The objective according to the Air Force was to show that no matter where they were, the Air Force could always be ready. The exercise goals included showcasing the US Air Force nimble combat doctrine and enhancing airmen's ability when operating in hostile environments. A plane landing in austere circumstances such as on gravel, airfields, or dirt roads is referred 
2 as an austere landing. In the instance of Northern Agility 22-1, austere landing was a type of landing on the roadway. Additionally, established the kinds of surfaces such as highways and unimproved landing strips that the aircraft may land on. Contrary to the 18th Thunderbolt, the B-52 Stratofortress is designed to be a long-range heavy bomber. These aircraft are a benefit to the Air Force as well because they can fly at high subsonic speeds at heights of up to 50,000 feet in the air, which is beneficial for a variety of operations. The Strato Fortress, known as the backbone of the American Strategic Bomber Force, has served with the U.S. Air Force for more than 60 years. The first B-52 aircraft took off in 1954 and was formally put into service in 1955. The B-52 Strato Fortress was an essential component of Operation Desert Storm in the 1990s and Operation Inherent Resolve in 2016. This was because of its adaptability. The plane, which had a number of amazing qualities, became a staple in numerous missions. The aircraft can even undertake scramble takeoffs during rapid deployment, which is the act of hastily mobilizing military-grade aircraft. Since this exercise involves several B-52s taking off in the 15-second intervals, it calls for a lot of practice. Without the correct preparation, this rapid takeoff could be risky one after the other. Thus, pilots must undergo extensive training and practice flights. The commander, pilot, radar navigator, navigator, and electronic warfare officer make up the B-52's whole five-person crew. Another takeoff technique that the airmen assist with is the plane physically exploding off the ground. The B-52 starts a fan's motor using a card start technique, which involves the use of small, carefully timed explosives. But the B-52 aircraft can accelerate takeoff using the card start technique, despite the fact that these significant jets may not frequently be in the news. Unlike certain aircraft, they do not take off with their rotation. The F-35, which is the most sophisticated fighter jet in the world according to manufacturer Lockheed Martin, may have made the Russian fighters less likely to harm the Allied operation if it had been in the air at the time. With its advanced deadly capabilities and durability, the F-35's goal is to retain air dominance. The most widely used of the three F-35 types the F-35A was created to fly from ordinary runways. The aircraft is built to be a stealthy air platform. Hence, everything is carried internally, so you won't typically see anything hanging off the wings. The jet has a single very massive engine. Other notable features include two tails on the back of the aircraft. The three variation each have the same advanced avionics and similar performance traits allowing for mission-specific capabilities. The aircraft are capable of performing standard takeoff and landing maneuvers and also market themselves as being versatile, high-performance, agile, and situationally aware. The Autonomic Logistics Information System or ALIS of the aircraft according to the Air Force carries out silent monitoring, upkeep, and prognostics to support the aircraft, maintain its continuous health, and improve operational planning and execution. Unlike the B-52, flying an F-35 requires the ability to take off in a scramble. In order to to do this, pilots must undergo training prior to a relocating each plane to its designated takeoff runway and launching it into the air one at a time. Do you think this will be the future of US aircraft's landing systems? Let's hear what you think in the comments section down below. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can always get to watch more incredible videos like this. This has been High Technology serving you the best and cutting-edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. Until then, then see you.